Hello friends, this video on electric circuits part 9 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos till part 8 before going ahead with part 9. So we observe some advantages of arranging cells in series and some advantages of arranging cells in parallel. So for practical purposes, cells are arranged in series to increase the voltage. So let us suppose, I mean, obviously that is how, knowing about the result, when you know that what kind of result do you want, you will do things accordingly. Why will you arrange cells in series or parallel? I mean, what is the practical application? Let us suppose you have some 10 batteries with you and each of them has some different EMF. One is of 2 volts, one is of 3 volts, one is of 10 volts, one is of 200 volts and so on. Now, you want to design a circuit. So, for that particular circuit, you would be having some kind of requirements. Let us say if you want a circuit which has, uh, an, which has a voltage source of EMF, say 50 volts, but you do not have a battery of 50 volts. So, in that case, what you can do? You can combine the batteries which you have to make it 50 volts, right? So, when you arrange cells in a series, what happens is you increase the voltage because when in series the voltage of each of the cells get added up. Let us suppose if you have 3 volts, I mean if you have 3 uh, batteries, each of EMF 2 volts. If you arrange them in series, then the equivalent EMF of the circuit becomes 2 plus 2 plus 2, that is 6 volts. That means your voltage got increased. So you can arrange cells in series to increase the voltage. Whereas, you can arrange cells in parallel to increase the current. As you saw in the previous slide, even though you arrange n number of cells in parallel combination, your voltage will still remain the same. We, we got a big formula for equivalent EMF, right? But when you arrange cells in parallel combination, your voltage, since the voltage across each of the cell remains the same, so there is no increase in voltage as such, but there is an increase in the current which flows through the circuit when the cells are arranged in parallel, right? So depending upon your requirement, whether you want to increase the voltage or you want to increase the current, you arrange cells in series or parallel combination respectively, right? So now let us go ahead and solve some problems. Let us look at the first problem. It says 3 resistors 1 ohm, 2 ohm and 3 ohms are combined in series. What is the total resistance of the combination? If the combination is connected to a battery of EMF 12 volts and negligible internal resistance, obtain the potential drop across each resistor. So let us solve the first part first. So here we have three resistors connected in series. 1 ohm, 2 ohms and 3 ohms. So what is the total resistance that is R equivalent? That is nothing but sum of the three resistors. When the resistors are connected in series, equivalent resistance is sum of the resistances. So this is 1 plus 2 plus 3. That is 6 ohms. What is the second part? It says that if the combination is connected to a battery of EMF 12 volts, that means if this combination is connected to a battery of 12 volts and negligible internal resistance, okay, that means R, small r is equal to 0 and this is 12 volts. Obtain the potential drop across each resistor. So we have to calculate the potential drop across each resistor. Now since these resistances are connected in series, the potential drop across each of them will be different. So let us suppose that the potential drop across this resistor is V1, the potential drop across this resistor is V2 and the potential drop across this resistor is V3. So they will have different potential drops. So we have to calculate V1, V2 and V3. Right? So for that, let us calculate what is the current that flows through the circuit. Current flowing through the 
circuit because the current which will flow through the circuit will be the same through each resistor because when resistors are connected in series same amount of current flows through each of them so the current flowing through the circuit will be the net emf of the circuit that is the net voltage of the circuit which is 12 volts divided by the total resistance of the circuit the total resistance is 6 ohms therefore the current flowing through the circuit is 2 amperes Therefore, the voltage drop across the first resistor that is V1 will be the current flowing through this resistor multiplied by this resistor that is 1 ohm. So, this will be 2 into 1 which is equal to 2 volts. Similarly, the volt potential drop across the second resistor will be current flowing through the second resistor multiplied by its resistance. So, that is 2 into 2 which is 4 volts. Similarly, the voltage drop across the third resistor will be current flowing through the third resistor multiplied by its resistance. So, this is 2 into 3 that is 6 volts. So, 2 volts, 4 volts and 6 volts respectively are the voltage drops across each of the resistors. Now, let us look at the next problem. The problem says 6 lead acid type of secondary cells each of emf 2 volts and internal resistance 0 0.015 ohms are joined in series to provide a supply to a resistance of 8.5 ohms that means there are six cells which are connected in series to provide supply to a resistance of 8.5 ohms so, this resistance R is 8.5 ohms and each of these cells has EMF 2 volts and internal resistance is 0 0.015 ohms, right? So, we have to calculate the current drawn from the supply and the terminal voltage. Terminal voltage is nothing but the terminal potential difference, right? So, we have to calculate the terminal potential difference and the current drawn from the circuit. So, first of all, we have to calculate the effective EMF of the circuit and the if total resistance of the circuit. So, the effective EMF of the circuit will be equal to the sum of the EMFs because all the cells are connected in series. So, this will be equal to 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. So, that is equal to 12 volts. And what will be the total resistance of the circuit? That will be the external resistance plus the equivalent internal resistance. So, external resistance is R and equivalent internal resistance will again be R plus R plus R plus R plus R. So, that is R plus 6R. So, this is equal to 8.5 plus 6 into 0 0.015. So, this comes out to be 9.4 ohms. Right? So, therefore, the total current that is drawn from the cell will be equal to the effective EMF divided by the total resistance of the circuit that is 12 divided by 9.4 which comes out to be 1.4 amperes. So, this is the current that will be drawn from the supply. So, what will be the terminal voltage? Terminal voltage V is nothing but terminal voltage is basically the voltage between these two points, right? That is the voltage between, when I talk about terminal voltage and I have six cells, you, you imagine that instead of six cells, you have only one cell with equivalent EMF. So, terminal voltage is the potential difference between these two points. So, that is basically the potential difference between these two points or we, you can say that terminal voltage is nothing but the voltage drop across the external resistor R. So, terminal voltage is equal to the voltage drop 
across the external resistor R. So which is equal to I into capital R. So I is 1.4 amperes and capital R is 8.5 ohms. So this comes out to be 11.9 volts. So this will be the terminal voltage. Right? I hope it's clear. Okay. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.